What is up, my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube? My name is Nimble Thor, and I will be your host today as we dive into the four best mobile games I played last week, spending about a minute talking about each of them so that you guys can get the quick overview and figure out if you want to play some of these games for yourself as well. Now, there are two things to remember before we get started today. One, if you want to see more about one of this week's games, remember that I've got a full video on each game right here on my channel where I dive into much more detail and show off the full gameplay and its pros and its cons. And two, I have saved my favorite game of this week for the end of this video, so I hope you'll enjoy a few minutes with me here today and let me know which game is your favorite or what you spend most of your time playing these days in the comment section down below this video. So the games I've got for you guys today will range from an amazing new turn-based strategy game to one of the most promising Clash Royale alternatives I've seen in a very long time on mobile, a fun yet chaotic fast-paced arcade platform shooter, and then lastly, a fishing game where we use sea mines to catch mutated sea creatures. I think we've got a pretty good episode ahead of us and potentially even the best of 2020 so far. We will see soon enough, but let's at least get started with today's first game, Minimax Tinyverse. Now, Tinyverse is a high quality and very polished strategy one versus one PvP game that plays like Clash Royale mixed with a MOBA game. So the theme and the setting for the game is that we control an army of tiny creatures that battle it out inside a draw in an old bookshop. The map has a few different lanes onto which we deploy units from our hand using food, trigger the ability of our main hero, and activate spells using mana to defeat our opponents and take down their towers. Winning a match in Tinyverse means that we get tickets, and these tickets we can use in the shop to buy instantly opening chests, which is really nice by the way, no wait time there, and these loot boxes or chests then reward us with new units or more of the same units so that we can level them up then. The game monetizes through a battle pass subscription coming in at $6 per season, and each season is 1-2 to two months, and through selling premium currency which can be used to buy additional unit chests, which makes the game slightly pay to progress faster. The game requires online access, which I guess is obvious, it's a multiplayer game after all. It takes up 633 megabytes of space. You can find it on both Android and on iOS. And overall, this might just be the best Clash Royale alternative I've played in years on mobile. And so although the developer can definitely turn the game very pay to win if they want to, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt because of the fun and relatively unique gameplay mix and the polish of the game. So if you're in the market for a Clash Royale alternative, Minimax is definitely worth checking out. Next up, we've got a game that I had a ton of fun with last week called Klee Space Time Cleaners. And it's a fun and unique, fast-paced arcade platform shooter. And I love these types of games, so this was just perfect for me at least. I especially really enjoyed the fact that all the tension in this game is on frantically jumping around the level, trying to avoid enemies and their bullets while we shoot automatically. It creates a fun and very chaotic experience where we constantly think we're going to get hit. So we constantly have to move from wall to wall, from platform to platform. And then eventually we die, and then between deaths we can switch between characters with unique traits, upgrade our characters using the game's one and only in-game currency, and equip consumable power-ups that we research for free over time in the game. Now for me this game was incredibly challenging, but if you succeed at beating all of the levels, you can even continue in the endless mode, and it also monetizes very lightly with a few incentivized video advertisements, and then a single $2 in-app purchase to get some currency to upgrade our characters, one extra backspace, and just a few more convenience features. The game is offline playable and it takes up only 63 megabytes of space on your phone. It's out on Android and on iOS and if you're a fan of arcade platform shooters, I can pretty much almost guarantee that you're gonna love this one, so my final verdict is that you should absolutely give it a chance. Now this episode's next game is called Mobfish Hunter and it's an action fishing game where we catch mutated sea creatures using sea mines as bait. Yep, it's exactly as weird and as fun as the description hopefully sounds. On our way into the deep, deep waters, we have to avoid hitting any fish, and once we hit a fish, or we reach the limit of how far our fishing rod can go, we start reeling in our sea mine, trying to hit as many fish as possible. Progression in Mobfish Hunter is based around buying new sea mines, each of which have different attack patterns, and each of which can be upgraded, and buying new utilities, which are permanent upgrades for our fishing rods. So that essentially means that even though you might switch out your sea mine, and you get a new fancy version, but it hasn't been upgraded yet, so you're at a bit of a disadvantage, you do at least still have those utilities that gives you a boost, no matter which sea mine you use. The game does have an energy system that gives us five lives, each of which regenerates after five minutes, and that is a slight annoyance, at least it could become a slight annoyance, but with a $2 in-app purchase to remove it completely though, the monetization is still very light in this game. Buying any in-app purchase also removes the game's advertisements, of which there are quite a few shown between levels if you don't remove them though. Mobfish Hunter requires online access, it takes up 220 megabytes of space, it's out on Android and on iOS, and while I heard you guys mention over on Reddit and on Discord, 
that it seems like a bit of a copy of Ridiculous Fishing, I think it's still worth checking out as a good free-to-play alternative. Although, I haven't played Ridiculous Fishing myself, so I can't exactly say how similar these two games are. But maybe you guys will let me know in the comments below what you think about the comparison between Ridiculous Fishing and Mobfish Hunter. But moving on to this week's fourth game, though, we've got Mace Machina, and it's a brilliant new turn-based strategy roguelike dungeon crawler by Arnold Rowers, who is the developer of Card Crawl and Card Thief as well. Now, I think a lot of you guys might have already played this game, because a lot of you seem to like Card Crawl and you liked Card Thief as well, so I think you guys just really like Arnold's games. I do as well, but if you haven't played this game, the goal in Mace Machina is to escape 15 rounds of a 4x4 mace by picking up a key and getting to the exit tile on the playing field while dealing with robots blocking the way and yeah also they're trying to kill us. So each tile holds a random item or weapon that we use to destroy robots and eventually get to the exit before we've spent all of our stamina. If we run out of stamina before the 15 rounds are over or if we get hit by one of the robots we die and we have to start all over again. The art style is unique and it's highly polished, the gameplay is fun and I guess it's practically impossible to complain about the monetization system either because on iOS it costs two dollars up front so it's a premium game and over on Android Android, the normal game mode is free to play, completely free to play, and we can then try any other game mode by watching an advertisement, or we can unlock the full game through a $2 in-app purchase. The game is offline playable, it takes up 148 megabytes of space, it's available both on Android and on iOS, and I think most of you are actually really going to enjoy this game, and especially if you like turn-based dungeon crawlers, of course. It also just happens to be my favorite game of the week, so I can easily recommend you take it for a spin if you haven't played it yourself already, and if you like what you've seen of the game so far in this video. So, how did you like this video though, I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll leave a like on your way out and subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new around here but you want more mobile gaming goodness because I try to cover most of the relevant new mobile games that come out. I talk about the pros and the cons, what I like, what I dislike. We talk about the monetization systems, we talk about all the bad stuff, but we also just have fun playing these games and I basically just document myself trying new mobile games. That's what I do around here. Hope you guys will enjoy it and most of all though, I just hope that you'll have a fantastic rest of your day and until next time, just keep gaming. Stay awesome and I'll see you guys around.